Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at SYSCTL command. This is a command that you can use to customize the behavior of your Linux system. It doesn't matter if you're running a PinePhone, a Librem 5, a Linux x86 desktop, or any other Linux system. This video applies to everyone who runs Linux, and I'm going to be going over what you can do to change the way your kernel behaves by using kernel parameters that you can set using the SYSCTL command. So first off, let's take a quick look at the manual page. And you can also follow along by typing man SYSCTL and then hitting enter. And at this point, we can look at configuring kernel parameters at runtime. But we can also change these kernel parameters immediately with one of the flags, we can use the W flag, for example, in order to test out different parameters. This can be used to change the behavior of your system, but it could also be used to enhance the security or the privacy as well, depending on your use case and your priorities. Of course, you have to keep in mind that what may work well for a desktop may not work well for a router. For example, taking a look at my current configuration file on a Pop! OS system example, we can see that some of these things could interfere with a router's normal behavior. And some of them we even have a, a small warning here about. You can find all of your different kernel parameters by simply SYSCTL and then the lowercase a flag or uppercase a flag will show you all of those different kernel parameters and their current values as it stands. So I'll be referring to these little parameters as the variable and this side as the value. And each value change will change the way that particular part of your system works. You have to keep in mind that you can't always use the same parameters as someone else's system. For example, we see right here this has a Wi-Fi device name that is pretty unique, not universal to all systems. So if I were to pass a kernel parameter involving this here, it would not work with a system wherein this didn't exist. And we can check out some of the way this is built up by using the tree command and then slash proc slash sys and we can see all of these directory structures. Let's refer back to our current settings at SYS, CTL, and then the A flag. We can also slow down the response of that and make it a slower, easier to read by doing a pipe and then the less command. We can see the values that are set here. If we ever need to just check a specific value, let's say we know which one of these variables we want to modify, and we want to see what it is that it is set to right now. But we don't want to look at the entire list, which seems to go on forever. Well, then we could simply do SYS, CTL, and then the variable in question. And at that point, it will return to us just that variable and just the value of it. If we want to change something right now, and we want to see how our system responds to that, so that we know it will be OK to set in our configuration file that starts at boot, which I'm about to cover, we could use SYSCTL and then W, and then I could add this, for example, and I could simply change the value to 1. I'm not going to do that, but this would be the command for checking the response. Now, this isn't going to change the way your system starts next boot. For that, we'll have to actually edit the configuration file itself, and that's what I'm going to cover now. For example, on Pop! OS, as you can see, I'm running Pop! OS. We're going by file system structure of this particular machine. If you're running Arch, if you're running Manjaro, you will be looking for your configuration file in this particular directory, slash etc, slash sysctl.d directory. And in that directory, with Arch, for example, you may see 001, SYSCTL.conf, and then you may see 999, SYSCTL.conf, as two example files 
Now, what does this mean? Well, this is just simply the priority. For example, this would be a later prioritization to the lower number. You can apply the same lessons in this video to any Linux system. We will go ahead and take a look at my configuration file, slash etc, slash sys, ctl, that's conf. And I'm using the less command. It's a way to slowly scroll through it. You can also use the space bar to skip by the page or just the enter key will go line by line. I have my host name set in this file and I can change that if I were wanting to change that. If I wanted to test out this particular parameter, I could simply go to sysctl and then I would do w kernel dot domain name equals pc if I wanted to change it right now. But if I want to change it at boot, of course, first use the W flag to test it out. And once you've found something you want to change at boot, we're going to go through real quick and I'm going to show you how. You don't need to use VIM. You can still use nano for this. I'm just going to use VIM in this example, but you can easily use nano just as well. So we can go through here, and as you can see, it has some of these low-level messages on console. You can change these numbers to change the type of message that is prioritized, and it'll also lower the number of messages overall. So this usually comes with, for example, a hash mark here. If you want to enable any of the default lines that you already see on your system, you can simply erase that. And if you're in VIM, you can do so with the X key here. As you see, I just did so. And it's as easy as that. You can scroll down, take a look at some of the things that I have added to mine, and you might actually be able to use those in yours. But remember, if you want to check and see if your system has this variable or parameter for boot for your kernel, go ahead and do SYSCTL and then just see what its value is. So then at that point you can see, oh, okay, this does exist. I can change this. I can work on this parameter. And that's a quick and easy way to be able to test if my configuration file will work for you. So go ahead and check them out just by doing SYSCTL and then this simple variable here we can use we can go ahead and look through some of the things that I have enabled to allow some forms of man-in-the-middle protection and mitigations. The TCP ICMP timestamps can be used to track devices. That is one reason that it's already added to YPRI. Once you're ready, if you're using VIM, you can do colon W to write. Then you can do, if you want to write and quit, you can simply go to colon WQ and that'll write and quit for you. If you're using nano, I did a recent tutorial to get people started. You may find some of these helpful. For example, disabling IP version 6. It's also going to disable IP version 6 IP addresses, which are directly linked to your MAC address. But if you were to change your MAC address, the IP version 6 is supposed to change with it. Some of my suggestions, and you can test those all out yourself and see what works for you. See what works using the W flag first, SYSCTL, W, and then change the value. That's what I got today, guys. Wanted to go over the SYSCTL command. Make sure to like this video if you want to support my work. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. And I will be back later with more on how to protect your privacy, Linux, open source, and free software.